Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Good morning. Morning. Hope everybody had a good week. It's good to see y'all's faces today on a not so great uh, chamber day. Well, there's nothing to say. Bring your plants in tomorrow. That's all I got to say. Uh, it's going to get a little chilly. But that's what last week was such a teaser. You know, we're in February, azaleas are blooming, and we're bound to have another freeze. So anyway, it is it is South Carolina. So all right, let's uh, got to want to run through a couple of things. Got a couple of questions for y'all, and then I've got a special guest I want to bring in. So um, let me get started. But first, cheers. It is just coffee, by the way. Um, Lots to report, though. Lot, in fact, good stuff happening. Um, the Congress this week uh, passed a budget bill. I think it's one point five trillion dollar budget bill, uh, which is big news. It goes. Um, it was signed late last night, or it was passed by the Senate late last night, and it now goes to uh, the president's desk, which we all assume he's going to sign and move on. But in that. Uh, federal government has been working on a continuing resolution since October 1st. And so basically, if you're a federal government, uh, if you work for the government, you've been at last year's budget numbers since October 1st. And it's such an aggravating thing that uh, for those that are trying to build things, they're trying to expand, if they got new programs to, to do, they have the authority to do it. They don't have the budget authority to do it. So uh, they've all been stuck in purgatory since October 1st. Well, the dam broke last night, and um, which is good news. More importantly for South Carolina, this was a huge victory. If you dig into the numbers, uh, uh, military pay, pay increases, all these things were, were big, but uh, their military construction projects were embedded in the, uh, the omnibus bill. And um, under the president's budget, we, ba we basically were going to get $250 million uh, uh, in military spending in, in, in South Carolina. We end up in with $273 million, uh, which is very good for, for our region. Specifically, Fort Jackson got about $55 million, and uh, McIntyre got 18.8 and some change. Um, but South Carolina as a whole probably received more share of the military construction budget than any other state. So big news uh, for us. Specifically, want to thank uh, our, our senior Senator Lindsey Graham for his efforts and his staff efforts. Uh, this was a yeoman's lift, quite frankly, to bring uh, those projects back to, to South Carolina. So we're very, very appreciative of him, his staff. But I was on the phone with Charleston uh, and other military bases this week, and, and um, uh, they're all excited, obviously. But um, getting, getting that much money, $55 million in military construction in one year is, is pretty good just for Fort Jackson. So anyway, thanks very much then. Um, let's see. Uh, the other thing, I mean, we don't even need to go there, but. Filling up a gas is painful. It's going to be for quite a while. Uh, you know, this Monday marks the anniversary of a two year anniversary of when the CDC announced Omicron is, is a pandemic. And then last year on Monday, they passed, it was a year anniversary of the uh, American Recovery Act, uh, ARPA, uh, which was a big deal for President Biden. Uh, what we're seeing now, though, is, you know, some of the things that were in the ARPA funding are is a contributing factor to the inflation. Uh, a lot of economists have come out and said, we knew it was gonna be, a, you know, it was either gonna be a, between one and 3% of the cause of the inflation that we've seen. But uh, February was a record 7.9% inflation, which is just painful. Uh, but more importantly, uh, what they're saying now is that it, they White House said yesterday, they expect it to get worse, not better. And uh, a lot of that, it stems from the oil problems. You've still got backlogged uh, the, the supply chain issues. It is a perfect storm, uh, but the oil issue is one that is going to hurt everybody for a while. And so I'm intrigued for 
what y'all are doing differently today than you were two weeks ago, uh, or have you done anything? Are you considering doing anything because of the oil uh, prices and gas prices going through the roof? Uh, specifically, I I'm hearing companies around the country look at four day work weeks for employees. Um, you know, they're, they're looking at surcharges on deliveries. Uh, anybody hear anything, see anything? Too soon? Okay. Uh, well, I will, I, I'll tell you this, all those things are gonna be in the works. And so, you know, we had a COVID surcharge actually 10 years ago, 2008, 2009, we had the biggest uh, the, the spike in gas prices before. Uh, after uh, some hurricanes, we're going to see uh, some pain at the pump, obviously, but uh, I'll be keep me posted what y'all are hearing, what you're seeing. But I do expect uh, gas surcharges on deliveries, gas surcharges on takeout, everything that you're going any way that they can add some dollars. But it is it is going to be painful. Intriguing enough with the work from home at post COVID what does a average work week look like now? Because cost, if you're commuting an hour, hour and a half, uh, that just got really expensive. So if anybody remembers gas prices in January of last year, $1.68, $1.70, here in South Carolina, $4.19 here, um, and $4.19 is the average right now. And, and even in South Carolina, you're paying over four bucks. So. That's uh, that's crazy. All right, we'll move on from the depressing stuff. Um, let's see what we got. Dang gum it. Small pen writing. I can't see it. Um, all right, let's take let's take a look at the state. Uh, the biggest news. Well, there are a couple of big news um, in the state legislature this week. One, Gary Semerl, longtime uh, member of the. South Carolina House is now his retirement after 30 years. What's funny is he's not much older than I am. He's like 56 years old. He's been in for 30 years. Uh, he's current majority leader. But more importantly, Gary's one of the good guys in a, uh, a very pragmatic legislator uh, and well-respected. When you see Gilda Cobb Hunter asking him not to resign, that tells you everything you need to know. Uh, who I love Gilda and she calls it like she sees it, but uh, that's gonna be a loss for the institution of the house. So I hate to see that, but he served uh, a long time. So I wish him and Mary Ruth the best uh, in, in uh, what's next for him. But he, by the way, he was the one that led the gas tax uh, fight about four years ago and uh, did a good job with that. So he's leading us through this budget process now, which is very interesting. Uh, the the Full House takes up the budget next week. And again, y'all, both uh, the House has passed an income tax bill that they're going to, they've sent to the Senate. The Senate adopted their own income tax relief bill that passed unanimously this week, which if I didn't have all y'all here, I would fall out of my chair. I mean, the, the fact that they've passed an income tax in South Carolina unanimously is in both bodies, especially in the Senate, is unprecedented. But um, big numbers to drop the, uh, we talked about this before, but dropping the, the top marginal rate from 7% down to 6%. The Senate's actually given a billion dollars in one-time money back to the taxpayer. The House goes from six to 6 point, seven to 6.5. And then the next five years dropping it to six. So it's a same, get, it's getting to the same place, but different timelines and, and how quickly we get there. But uh, that's big for y'all as individuals, taxpayers in South Carolina, it does not really impact businesses. But um, what will impact you is in the budget next week. And so this is important. If you see your house member uh, this week, I want to um, mention a couple of highlights that are in the budget provisos for this week. Okay. Sorry, I got to read this, but um, 11 million to pay for quiet zones throughout Columbia. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. We have 60 railroad crossings in Columbia, but trying to make quality of life better in Columbia with quiet zones. Um, 18 million towards a $23 million project for upgrade roads and spurring um, development. That's a, that 
that's spurring development around the waterfront. Apologize, that's 18, that's a William Street project. Um, 16 million for the facelift of Finley Park, 13 million um, to do intersections along Assembly Street, making that probably a two lane road versus a, I mean, a four lane road versus a six lane road. Um, $14 million to develop a vacant property on Beltline. $15 million for Congaree Commons, a, um, which would be a planned Southeast Columbia uh, grocery store, farmer's market, commercial kitchen. $14 million for a parking garage in Five Points. And $10 million towards the convention center. But more importantly, it's about... Uh, 35 million to this is all for Adam Vance, no doubt about it, but to fix the railroad crossings on Assembly, Hugie, and Rosewood. So that is a big lift uh, for the for the House and, and the Richland delegation. That is a ton of money to ask for. Uh, no doubt they're not going to get all of it, but uh, if you talk to your legislator this week, your House member, uh, make sure they take care of us in Richland County. In the city of Columbia, but the biggest by far, I would say, would be the railroad crossings. This has been an issue for years, even when we passed the penny sales tax back in uh, 2010, 2012. Why we didn't think about doing the railroads, I don't know, but we've got beautiful brick pavers at the University of South Carolina uh, across from the Colonial Life Arena, but we still get caught by trains daily. But anyway, uh, Hopefully that will be remedied uh, shortly. But uh, anyway, it's a, it's still about a five to ten year fix. But we need to get the money. So anyway, I'll, I'll throw that out at you. Remember to talk to your legislator. Um, let's really was impressed. Um, see that sorry, that's a two hundred and fifty million dollar rail plan, by the way, total. Uh, and they're looking for some down payment money from that. But it is a big, big lift. Um, how about locally? We hadn't talked about this in a while. Rich has always brought it up and, and I, it fell off my radar. More earthquakes this week, Rich. Uh, 20th since December, 2.2 this week uh, in the same spot a little between here and uh, in Camden around Elgin. We averaged 20 a year, just so you know, in all of South Carolina, we averaged 20 earthquakes a year. Lo and behold, we've had 20 since December. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Um, also want to commend um, and, and give a shout out to uh, um, Casey, uh, Aaliyah Ray and, and Cassie, Cassie Aaliyah Ray and, and Connect and Serve and what they're doing. They create an app for the city of Columbia police to monitor um, uh, police, uh, Columbia police procedures and processes and all that, which I think is a great uh, use of funds is, is quite frankly a good tool to uh to help the city police one work with the community a little differently and so props to chief stewart oops, chief stewart uh chief holbrook uh for working with cassie on that that's good stuff all right i want to take a few questions from y'all but before i do that i want to introduce jacob cook with sun printing jacob good morning Good morning, Carl. Thanks for having us. Yeah. So Sun Printing is a big partner of ours. We really appreciate it. And, and we were going to go to his spot, but you know what? He, Jacob's done so much for us around here that I uh, wanted to highlight uh, Sun today. And uh, he is actually in the office behind uh, or in front of a mural that, that uh, Sun did for us uh, on pictures around Columbia. They also put some great looking signage up outside of our office, which we much needed. So we appreciate everything you've done for us. But how are things going with Sun? That's great. Yeah, we appreciate the stuff you guys let us do for you. Um, sitting here in front of uh, one of those pieces, but we've done the interior, exterior, a little bit of everything. The, the sponsor wall is out in the lobby. So I thought it was a fitting uh, place for us to sit and, and uh, do the call together. Um, sun's great. We can't complain. You know, we've... Uh, Everything you've touched on affects us from the gas to, to COVID and everything else. But um, as a family owned business, we're doing everything we can to, to hang in there and, and try to not only survive, but thrive. Yeah. Tell me, uh, but y'all, it's a family owned business, but tell me a little bit of history. Yeah. So I started in 1983, um, 
family owned. Uh, three owners would go out in the morning and sell it and come back in the afternoon and print it. So uh, that's where we came from, ended that first year, I think with 16 full-time employees and have been very blessed ever since. Uh, so we uh, fast forward to today, um, largest privately held commercial printer in the state, um, have an extensive uh, mailing operation called Consolidated Mailing Services. Um, you, you get stuff in your mailbox probably just about every day that comes through that shop. So direct mail, secure data printing, uh, proxy ballots, any of that kind of stuff is coming through that shop. The grand format facility is huge for us right now. We just uh, expanded from 13,000 square feet to 32,000 square feet. Um, so we got a lot of growth going on there. Um, and uh, just added some embroidering um, in-house as well to enhance our promotional division. So. That's good stuff. Uh, a lot of growth in the last 12 months. Obviously, printing is your bread and butter from a historical perspective, but you also do signs and you do promotional items as well, right? Yes, sir. Absolutely. We, um, certainly very well known for, uh, for the printing business. Um, Consolidated Mailing Services is very well known and respected um, in the mailing business. Uh, some of the things that people... Um, don't correlate as much as that signage business, which is all kinds of interior signage, trade show graphics, um, vehicle wraps are a huge part of our, our business there. And then coming and installing on site for um, office renovations, that's been huge with COVID, you know, people yeah. starting to come back into the office and, and signage about COVID or just welcoming people back, kind of freshening up the offices. Um, been doing that for, I think, 12 years now. Um, and then promotionalize. We've done that for probably 20 or 25 years, um, doing embroidering in-house, that type of stuff. So uh, pretty much if you can see it, we've got our fingers in it for sure. Good. Well, listen, I can't thank you enough for all you do for us, but uh, he's a great community partner, active everywhere, but uh, and a good dad too. He's got a three month at home and you can't even, you can't see the shadows under his eyes, uh, but, but trust me, they're there. So uh, thanks for getting up early and being with us today. Appreciate you having us. Yeah. All right. Let's talk shop for everybody else here today. What's going on in your business? What can the chamber do to help? Or what are you seeing out there that we need to be aware of? Hey, Carl, it's Rich. Real quick. Hey, yeah. uh, we got good news this morning. The CDC lowered Richland County Again? to low. It's the lowest it can be. Uh, so that's fabulous. In fact, the entire state of South Carolina is low, except for Dillon and Marion counties. They are both medium, but uh, it's huge news. It's that's great. Hey, thanks for that. Uh, man, you've been up on that. I, I looked at that after we talked last week and couldn't find it, but I, I obviously I trusted you, uh, but your, your sources are great. I'll it's, send you a link. Okay, that'd be great. Um, hey, Rich, this is Doug at Tyson. With that being low, and still having the 60 day mandate. When do, do we know if we'll hear anything on that? Cause the uh, extension of the 60 day is still holding us off from re -room, removing our mask here at the Tyson. Doug, I, I was just with the uh, county administrator and asked that question. They, they may revisit now. They were holding steady as if it was going to be locked in, but Richland one school district is voting today at noon whether or not to uh, remove the, the mask mandate for kids. Um, I think that we can apply some pressure on Richland County to revisit this now that uh, we've lowered that again. But um, just for the, I was at a public meeting before uh, the, the administrator was masked up and, and, and doing his thing. Other members of Richland County Council were not. So I did find that a little funny. But anyway, Doug, I, 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 I've asked, but I've not gotten a clear answer. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, speaking of the meeting I went to, I'm going to hold this up so y'all can see it. I, I tried to find a link for it a minute ago. I didn't see it. And I probably can find it faster than I can. But uh, this is the, can you see it? It's the 2001-2002 competitiveness report from M Ingenuity and MBLG. They put this out for the last seven years and it, it just basically is a snapshot, a trend of how we are competitive with, uh, with other cities that peer cities around the Southeast. Uh, not a lot of great news, quite frankly, but um, it, it, it shows, I'll have, let me digest it because I just saw it this, we got it this morning at eight and I really hadn't had a chance to digest it, but be on the lookout for that. And we talk about it maybe next week. So thanks. All right, who else has got something? Um, hi, Carl, this is Mary with Mary's Kitchen. 
Hey, Mary. Um, I got some good news. Mary's Kitchen is going to be having a grand opening in the next 50 days at Solar Station um, on the canal side. So um, I'll announce more, but I just wanted to give the good news. Awesome. Here. Congratulations. We look forward to it. Thanks. Great location, downtown location. All right. What else we got? Hey, everybody. Hey, Bill. Hey, I'm new to the group. And if I don't know if I'm talking enough, I'm new to the state I'm from Long Island. But I moved here in the beginning of the year. And I'm a purpose-built business expert. I work very closely with small, uh, small business owners and CPAs. And I'm looking for resources for these uh, clients of mine. They don't network the way that we do. And they turn to me. For resources. So if you have something you can bring to small business owners and CPAs, I'd love to spend some time with you, get to know you, see if I can help you get business. And uh, I look forward to seeing everybody on Tuesday. Great. Nice meeting you. Hey, nice to meet you. And, and we'll work on that accent for you. Give us, a, <laughs> give us about a year. Um, yeah, Tuesday, we're having a small business breakout. Uh, we've got my friends uh, from Lexington and West Columbia Chambers. Um, coming to join and uh, have a little bit of discussion over at uh, Segar Park. So uh, I think Susan put something in the chat box about that. Uh, so we're looking forward to seeing everybody there. Um, let's see, I, I, I always love to do this. I'm gonna have to call on somebody since nobody's speaking up right now. Anybody? Hey, Carl, I'll jump in for quick. Ron, I was looking right at you too. How are you? I saw that, man. I saw that. I'm doing <laughs> good. I'm doing good. You know, uh, we can't tell it necessarily by the weather today, but one of the great things that's going on is that uh, spring is finally just right around the corner. And what we're seeing with uh, not only with the release and the, the relaxation of some of the things with COVID, but we have people who are very, very excited about summer festivals, spring festivals, getting back out and getting engaged in the community. And it's a great thing to see. Hey, it, it is fun. And other than this uh, little blip of a weather we're going to have this weekend, there's a lot of activity going on next week. We've got, of course, the Five Points 40th anniversary uh, of the Five Points festivities, uh, of the St. Patty's Day festivities at Five Points. So uh, put that on your calendar. Uh, there'll be thousands of your closest friends and neighbors there. And uh, fountains are already green, by the way. Hey, Richard, you didn't introduce your friend. Last week, we had a baby. Today, we, Richard brought a friend. Oh, that was uh, Jackson, my Catahoula leopard hound, who is a two-time cancer survivor. He's oh. about 75 pounds and obstinate as old get out. But he's hey. my buddy. <laughs> After two bouts of cancer, he deserves to be obstinate. So good for him. Yeah. He's fun. All right. Anything else from anybody? Jacob, how's your dad? Doing great. I was just about to give you a shout out. It's been a while since I've seen you. Everybody's doing very, very well. We can't, well, can't well, complain. Tell him I asked about it. I will certainly do it. And Steve over at Blue Cross, it's good to see you too, my man. It's been a while. All right. Well, listen, uh, I hope you all have a great, great weekend. Thanks again, Jacob, for being with us today. And thanks for some printing. Uh, we look forward to uh, getting back together. We'll do it one more time next week. But uh, y'all be careful. Stay safe driving the right lane, okay? All right. See y'all. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Good weekend, everyone. Thank you.